Good afternoon to all. Myself, M. F. Mansuri, and I have with me my colleague, Jimish Patak. We are from the Department of Microbiology, Shrimati S. M. Panchal Science College, Talod. Today's topic of discussion is contributions of Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch in the development of microbiology. Before I discuss the contributions, I would take this opportunity to thank the BISAC team, the Sandan team, the KCG team, our Department of Microbiology head and principal Dr. S. C. Parik and my colleagues for providing us this opportunity to deliver this lecture here. Now, if we start discussing the contributions of Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch, they were the pioneering scientists who developed the fundamental base of microbiology. So why should we study this history in the first place? Well, history is the base of any science. If you study the history, you can behold the future. And their contributions have been over many decades starting from like, like 1857 to 1888 for Louis Pasteur. Their whole lives have been dedicated to the development of this science. And Louis Pasteur, as we all know, is known as the father of microbiology. So if we see the first slide of development of uh, this science, we will begin with the introduction to Louis Pasteur. Then we will discuss the contributions of Louis Pasteur with pasteurization the germ theory, the disapproval of spontaneous generation and then his experiments and demonstrations of chicken cholera with the invention of the rabies vaccine and finally the honor that the government of France gave him by developing the Pasteur Institute. This institute is so famous that the students of Louis Pasteur and their students have contributed to the overall wholesome development of the science of microbiology. Then we will discuss the introduction to Robert Koch, the contributions of Robert Koch in terms of how he developed pure culture technique, how he was instrumental in the discovery of anthrax and tuberculosis bacilli, the postulates of Koch and then the identification of the germ that caused cholera and finally his inductment to the Institute of Infectious Disease in Berlin and the final prize that he got for all his invention is the Nobel Prize in 1905. Now Louis Pasteur quoted that chance only favors the prepared mind and in science the mind that is prepared can grab this chance and acquire the status of identification. He also said that the universe is asymmetric and that the life is the result of this asymmetry or its indirect consequences. He, he said that the universe is asymmetric and I am persuaded that life as it is known to us is a direct result of the asymmetry of the universe or of its indirect consequences. So Louis Pasteur was born in December 1822 in France. He first did his BA in 1840 and then his B.S. in 1842, which was followed by his Ph.D. in 1847 in, pa in, 1847 in Paris. Pasteur then spent several years researching and teaching at Dijon Lycée. In 1848, he became a professor of chemistry at the universities of Strasbourg. Then he was appointed as professor of chemistry and dean of science faculty at the University of Lille in 1854. Here he carried out his, he started doing his research. Now let us see the key events in the career of Louis Pasteur. In 1857, Louis Pasteur first developed the heating process that we all know now as the process of pasteurization. This was followed by his publication in 1861 of the germ theory, which was the basis of the development of the science. He followed this with disapproval of discrediting the spontaneous generation theory in 1864. This was very important because there were so many beliefs and faiths 
prevailing in those years that he had to do this finally people believe that life came from life was true only for us human beings or for big animals but life originated from another life was not true for small living creatures maybe like ri- uh, like rats or mice or microbes they said that they could it erupt spontaneously and this had to be disproved and the final disapproval was given by louis pasteur then he proceeded to study the chicken cholera here he made many demonstrations and uh, experiments on chicken cholera along with his colleague chamberland he was successful in that and then in 1881 he inoculated sheep against anthrax again he was successful here in 1884 he developed a rabies vaccine now this development of rabies vaccine brought him to immediate fame and pasteur was honored by the french government by setting up an institute in his name let us begin his contributions in detail the first contribution was germ theory and spontaneous generation hand to hand now while he was doing his 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 uh, career he was asked by many people by wine company to explain why some wine turned sour they taste bad or that they, they, they tastes off whilst it was being made so pasteur's research discovered that there were germs in the air that could cause liquids to go off or taste bad In 1857 again he was asked by some people one of them was Monsieur Bigo to explain why his alcohol fermentation had gone bad his experiments again showed that germs caused the decay so wine turned sour or milk turned sour and he demonstrated that organisms such as bacteria were responsible for souring of this wine beer or even milk as you can see when the milk turns so it is not we c- we cannot drink it so he then invented a process where bacteria could be removed by boiling and then cooling this liquid he completed the first test on april 20 1862 today this process is known as pasteurization pasteurization is a process of boiling a liquid to destroy the germs within and it is still used today in fact most dairy products wines and beers and many other edible fruits and their syrups and their juices are pasteurized as you can see even coffee cream or chocolate cream has to be pasteurized for its long term storage we move on this to the silkworm disease pasteur was given the opportunity to study the silkworm disease and 1865 he helped save the silk industry he proved that microbes were attacking the healthy silkworm eggs causing the disease febrine he proved that or he showed that disease would be eliminated if the microbes were eliminated he showed the use of healthy disease free caterpillar to eliminate the disease pasteur demonstrated that germs caused disease in animals and if you use healthy animals disease free animals or worms you could d- eliminate the disease and thereby improve the product that is being made so now he published all his findings in 1861 in the form of germ theory all his experiments were published by now so he was again given the task of trying to clear the spontaneous generation theory so in 1864 pasteur followed up his theory by discrediting the theory of spontaneous generation so let us see how he disproved this spontaneous generation theory Pasteur set about proving that germs came from the air and could therefore be prevented from entering the liquid. He constructed a special flask called Swan Neck 
flask or some call it gooseneck flask he heated meat with water for several hours in this flask air was allowed in this flask but no life appeared in the flask so we could see that how a flask could be made a long neck flask is first added with all the liquid inside and then its neck is heated to twist it to turn it into a swan neck now air can pass through this swan neck easily as you can see but this swan neck traps the microbes it holds the microbes inside and it does not allow the microbes to pass into that liquid so the microbes get trapped in the neck of the flask and cannot reach the broth inside the flask so the broth would remain sterile and not get spoiled but if you tilt the flask if you just tilt it slightly the broth comes in contact of the bacteria in the neck and thus now bacteria can multiply in the broth and spoil it this way pasteur ended the controversy of spontaneous generation next on he was gi given this experiments to demonstrate or demonstrations to perform for chicken cholera now chicken cholera experiments were held in 1879 when pasteur had isolated the bacterium causing a disease called chicken cholera now by chance or accidentally he exposed the chickens to an aged culture or old culture of cholera bacterium he wanted to demonstrate this and he demonstrated that they became resistant to the actual bacteria so he by chance he took old or aged culture of cholera bacterium which he injected into healthy chickens but the chickens failed to contract cholera they remained free from cholera he called this let us assume that batch 1 chicken he took many batches of chicken one of them was batch 1 chicken which was which was injected with an old culture of cholera bacterium so they were free from cholera now he took the same batch 1 chicken and then injected them with fresh culture of cholera bacterium and again he found that the chickens did not contract the disease the chickens remained free from cholera so he took another fresh batch of chickens batch 2 and then he took the same fresh culture of cholera bacterium which he injected into the healthy chicken and then he found that the chickens died of cholera so to sum up this experiment we can see this slide in which an aged culture of cholera bacterium is injected into healthy chickens the chickens don't contract any disease in fact when a fresh culture of cholera bacteria is injected into the same chickens they still don't contract the disease but if you take another group of chicken or batch of chicken which are not previously injected with this aged culture and if you inject this new batch of chickens with a fresh culture they die so by repeating these experiments he found that old culture of bac bacteria they lose their ability to cause disease but still have the ability to stimulate the body to produce some substances called antibodies these antibodies protect the animals against future infections this way pasteur demonstrated the principles of immunization then he was given this problem of rabies vaccine now rabies disease was not curable during his time and he was just a physician he was just a chemist not a physician so he decided to focus his efforts on the problem of rabies on july 6 1855 pasteur vaccinated joseph mister a 9 year old boy who had been bitten by a rabid dog he had performed these experiments on animals previously and he was successful in eliminating the rabies disease in infected animals but to treat a human was a different thing he was not sure of its outcome 
because it was basically an animal disease that was contracted to humans but he took his try he took his chances and he vaccinated joseph mister now how did he do this now as we can see that in this in this slide that vac uh, joseph mister is being inoculated by some thing and louis pasteur is overlooking this this uh, this performance so pasteur made a vaccine against rabies by using brain the spinal cord and other other organs of the infected rabbits so he he treated this uh, joseph mister and he was successful he saved his life and this preparation made from the infected rabbits was named as vaccine he coined the term vaccine in honor of edward zener he used the word vacca in his in his term which meant cow cow was basically an experiment that was done by edward zener edward zener used a similar preparation for the elimination of another disease known as cowpox and by giving this term vaccine he was honoring edward zener who was previously successful in doing a similar experiment now the success of pasteur's vaccine brought him to immediate fame to honor him the french government set up the pasteur institute in paris in 1888 so we see here that years of discovery decades of his research finally brought him a great honor so pasteur's ideas some of the pasteur's ideas were yet, were yet not accepted he recommended that surgical instruments be boiled before an operation to kill any germs on them but most surgeons ignored this advice this had to wait until aseptic surgery developed in the late 19th century following the robert cox discovery of the microbe that caused septicemia a disease in the body so finally i quote the quote of louis pasteur when he said that when i approach a child or a student he inspires me in me two sentiments one tenderness for what he is and respect for what he may become so here i end my discussion of louis pasteur and pass on my discussion to my colleague <coughs> now before i pass on my discussion to my colleague i would like to tell my dear students that hard work always pays and it pays in one way or the other we may not acquire the fame of louis pasteur but we can develop the science of microbiology to new frontiers to new era and with this i pass on my discussion to my colleague chimish thank you very much sir uh, for giving us the very detailed idea regarding the louis pasteur and these are the two scientists who made great contributions in the development of field of microbiology so here now i am taking the chance to explain the another great scientist robert cock who also in the same time or during the same period almost where pasteur was doing some of the experiments in the one corner of the world in the germany another scientist which is having the same importance or also doing the great work in the field of microbiology to develop microbiology was robert cock the life span as you can see in the figure it, this is the photo of robert cock and his life span was in between the year 1843 to 1910 this was the short tenure but he did the great works the key events which actually the robert cock contributes for the microbiology the first key discovery was in the year 1876 he discovered the microbe that caused a very fatal disease which is known as the anthrax after 2 years of this discovery he again discovered the microbes that were responsible to cause wounds to go septic 
as in the previous discussion the in the last topic the word septicemia was used also some year later in the year 18 and 82 he identified the microbe that caused tuberculosis all of we are well aware of this and also we'll go in the detailed discussion of this also the another important discovery was the identification of the germ that also caused cholera pasteur had also work on the cholera and at the same time in the different region of the world robert koch also worked on the same disease in the year 1891 the Ger- german government set up the institute for infectious diseases in berlin and that was under the supervision of robert koch and ultimately the highest honor in the field of science is the nobel prize or in the any field in year 1905 he obtained this honor now we'll discuss some of the all the history and the journey of robert koch throughout the f- development of microbiology first we'll see some of the his personal history he was born on december 11 1843 at the town klosthal and it is located in the upper hills mountains in the country germany so he was basically a german he was the son of a mining engineer and from the childhood intelligence and methodical persistence were the characteristics of him he took his schooling or he attended the local high school which which was called gymnasium and there showed an interest in biology he was from the childhood very much interested in the field of biology and like his father he also liked to travel throughout the world for the higher studies in 1866 he went to the university of gottingen to study medicine here the professor of anatomy was jacob hanel and cock was no doubt influenced by hanel's view that and what was the view was that infectious diseases were caused by living parasitic organisms but there were no such Uh, what we can say the evidences were there that the disease are caused by these parasitic organisms or people are not capable of identifying them purifying them so robert koch decided to work on this topic so after taking his md degree in medicine in year 1866 koch went to the berlin for 6 months of chemical study so after medicinal study he also got the chemical study and there he also came under the influence of great scientist virchow ultimately at the end of his educational journey he joined the profession in 1867 he settled after period as assistant in the general hospital at hamburg in the general practice first at Langenhagen and soon after in 1869 at Rackwitz in the province of Posen here he also gave another examination to improve himself in the medical field so he passed the exam of medical officers examination and in 1870 he volunteered for service in the Franco-Prussian war and from 1872 to 1880 he became the district medical officer for wallstein it was here that he carried out the epoch making researches which placed him at one step in the front rank of scientific workers so this up to this time he just developed himself he made qualified himself and he start doing the work in the field of medicine so first the robert koch he first worked on the disease which was very prevalent and very dangerous disease at that time and there was no treatment of the disease and that disease was anthrax so it was very much spreaded among the farm animals 
in the Wall Street district where he joined the profession and so at that time there was there were no enough facilities available and still also he totally or entirely cut off from the libraries where he can read the books or references regarding this disease or he was not even able to contact the other scientist or scientific workers so even in such harsh conditions uh, due to the demands and his credit or his knowledge so people demanded demands made on him by his busy practice on study of this disease and give some of the treatments or some of the cure regarding this disease he was consulted Uh, if we talk about his laboratory so actually it was not a laboratory but it was just the four roomed flat and that was his home and what what were this his equipments so apart from the microscope given to him a simple microscope compound microscope to him by his wife he provided for himself so this this conditions are actually the inspiration for today's people even he proved that without the help of sophisticated instruments with the help of simple instruments if you are very keen or if you give efforts in a particular field then you can made great discoveries without the help of facilities so he gave some of the ideas regarding the anthrax anthrax bacillus had been earlier discovered by different scientists like Polander, Rayer and Devine but Cox set himself to prove scientifically that this bacillus is in fact the cause of disease the earlier people have discussed or they have given some of the evidences that there might be the presence of bacilli to cause the disease anthrax but they were not able to prove but cock did this and he gave some of the proofs that the same bacilli or the anthrax bacilli or today which we call the bacillus anthracis is actually responsible to cause this anthrax so he did an experiment to prove this he inoculated a mice by means of homemade slivers of food with anthrax bacilli taken from the spleens of farm animals that had been died of anthrax means he took the samples from the animals which were died of anthrax and then he in injected this into the mice and found that this mice were all killed by the bacilli he also did another batch and in that batch he inoculated the same mice with the blood but this blood was from the healthy animals means the animals which were free from anthrax and what he found that this animals remained healthy means they did not suffer from the disease so now it was clear then when he injected the blood taken from the diseased animals then the mice were died but if he injected the same types of mice with the diseased free blood then they remained healthy or free from diseases so this confirmed the work of others who had shown that the disease can be transmitted by means of blood of animals suffering from anthrax but even still this did not satisfy cock he also wanted to know whether anthrax bacilli that had never been in contact with any kind of animal could cause the disease or not means even the bacilli cannot came in the contact with animal if it is free means in the pure culture and whether still it is capable of doing the disease or not to solve this problem he obtained the pure cultures of the bacilli by growing them on the aqueous humors of the oxeyes at that time actually the robert cock we can say he was the pioneer of 
obtaining the techniques of pure culture and he himself after experimenting various ways he developed to obtain pure cultures by studying or drawing and photographing these cultures means he draws the figures structures of the bacterium and cock recorded the multiplication of the bacilli so in the culture whatever the culture he was used he found the increase in the number of bacterium so he conclude that even in the pure culture if some of the nutrients or artificial media can be provided to the bacterium then they are capable of multiplying and he recorded all this by giving the photographs or images he also concluded one fact that this bacilli can form spores a structure which is known as the resistant now we all know the spores are the dormant resistant structures so that were first observed in the bacilli by robert cock means when the conditions are unfavorable to them they produce inside rounded spores and he first observed this in the bacilli by robert cock also spores can resist adverse condition especially if we are talking about the bacilli then the lack of oxygen it can easily resist and when once again the suitable conditions of life are restored the spores give rise to bacilli again so first time they observed the spore form of the bacterium as well as the vegetative form of the bacilli so cock grew this such type of bacilli for several generation in this pure cultures means without using any laboratory animals or experimental animals he just grow them in the artificial media and although they had no contact with any kind of animal when they were injected into the healthy mice or some experimental animals they were still able to cause anthrax in that particular experimental animals so the the problem which was uh, uh, given to the robert cock that whether even without the contact with animals microorganisms in pure form whether they are capable of causing anthrax or not he solved by doing this work then results of this work was the demonstrated by cock to various other scientist whatever the results he obtain after this observation he observed it to the ferdinand cohen who was the professor of botany at the university of breslau or who called a meeting of his colleagues means the various scientist or the professors which were working there to witness this demonstration among the public means among whom one of the important scientists professor conheim or who was the professor of pathological anatomy so in the presence of both con and conheim and other colleagues he carried out that demonstration and they were deeply impressed by cox's work and when con in 1876 published cox's work in the botanical journal whatever the observation results as we have discussed just earlier all these results were published in the journal and this was the time when cock became very famous among the scientist at that time after this he continued to work at wallstein as we have discussed earlier he was the medical officer there he further work for 4 years and during this period he improved himself in the methods of fixing staining and photographing bacteria so this was the another important discovery he developed the techniques of how to fix the bacteria how to stain the bacteria and how to observe and draw the bacteria so we can get exact idea of the structure and the multiplication system or the size of the bacterium he also did the important work 
on the study of disease caused by bacterial infections of wounds and he also published his results in the journal in the year 1878 also this work provided he had done with the anthrax a practical and fit basis for the control of this infections means how one can control the infections to control the infections first one should have idea which kind of microorganisms are actually responsible to cause disease what is the nature what is the size and what is the mode of spread of this bacteria then we can easily cure such type of diseases so the practical base and the evidence or systematic study of control of the infections were first time given by the robert cock Cock was still, however, without adequate quarters or conditions for his work. Still, means he had no specific facilities to study out or to carry out such type of experiments. He had no not well equipped laboratories until 1880, when he was appointed a member of the Imperial Health Bureau in Berlin. So up to this. he was not given the facilities which are required and still he did a great job so after this the appointment of membership in the berlin he was provided first with a narrow or inadequate room but later with a better laboratory in which who could work with great scientists or his co-workers like loefler gefki and others and they worked as their assistant of robert cock so up to this he was not provided with the well equi- equipped laboratory but now he had the good equipments and well managed laboratory with his assistants here cock continued to refine the bacteriological methods he used in wallstein so he basically he invented new methods in german which are called as reinculturing means the cultivation of organisms in pure cultures so first time he gave the idea of using the solid media because we cannot observe microorganisms without the help of microscope if we want to observe if suppose we are using the liquid medium then also we can just observe the indirectly turbidity but not the microorganism if we want to observe organism in the directly means by naked eye without the help of microorganisms then they must grown on the solid surface which now we call as colony so the using uses of the solid media was first time demonstrated by robert cock and he used initially he used potato chips as a solid media and later on he used the agar which is now very well used and universally accepted solidifying agent as media also another important use was the use of flat dish which is nowadays we are known as uh, we are call it as petri dish and that was actually the invention of his colleague rj petri and so at that time he gives two important distribution contributions like the use of solid agar and also the use of petri plates which are very common in use even nowadays so he also developed various methods of staining means to observe the bacteria and which made them more easily visible and helped to identify them so now we can grow the organisms on the solid media we can cultivate the organisms in pure form we can stain the organisms so we can even identify the organisms and this can be helpful in the control of any disease so the result of all this work was the introduction of methods by which pathogenic bacteria could be simply and easily obtained in pure culture 
free from other organisms and by which they could be detected and identified so overall at after observation and such experiments cock laid down the conditions which are known as the cox postulate and for which he is actually known throughout the world so he gives some of the conditions which are actually responsible to cause any particular disease with the help of particular bacteria means when we can say that this bacteria is responsible to cause this particular disease so he gave some rules if that rules find true then only we can say this organism is responsible to cause this disease which are known as cox postulates so to obtain this cox postulate he carried out one experiment and after then he gave us the that cox postulates or cox rules what was that experiment so he took a mice and he inoculated that mice and with a pathogenic organism so that mice was killed by uh, killed by the disease he obtained the organisms from bacteria from that killed mice and observed that in the microscope he made the images and grow that particular microorganisms on the as we have discussed earlier by using solid media in a flat dish that is petri plate and whatever the pure cultures obtain that once again he injected that into another healthy mice so after the inoculation that healthy mice got disease and also uh that organism was killed due to the reproduction of the same disease means the disease which was observed in the first mice that the, the same microorganisms or bacteria were grown on the pure form on the solid media once again that bacterium were injected into the healthy mouse then there there was a reproduction of the same disease and that mice was killed and once again he obtained the pure cultures of that particular bacteria on the solid media and once again he observed as we can see in the figure of microscope that the same or the identical bacterium or microorganisms were found so after observing this experiment he concluded the cox postulates he gave basic four rules when we can say that the particular bacterium or organism is responsible to cause any disease so these four rules must be followed and then only we can say that this organism is responsible for this particular disease the first rule was a specific organism can always be found in association with a given disease second rule the organism can be isolated and grown in pure culture in the laboratory then the third one that pure culture will produce the disease when inoculated into another susceptible animal and once again fourth rule it is possible to recover the same organism in pure culture from the experimentally infected animals as we have discussed in the earlier experiments so these are the four rules which are known as the cox postulate so after giving this after 2 years he discovered another bacillus which is known as tubercle bacillus and also he developed a method of growing such bacillus in pure culture and he also published his classical work on this anthrax bacillus <coughs> then he was still busy with the working on tuberculosis he was sent by the government to egypt here he had to work on cholera so he investigate an outbreak of cholera in that country he particularly identified the bacterium which is responsible to cause cholera which is known as vibrio in that actually caused the cholera he took the pure culture 
he took the pure culture of this vibrio to his country and also we can say he also studied cholera in india too as in the earlier discussion uh, we discussed that he urged to travel a lot so he sent in the various countries like egypt or also at that time even when there were no transportation facilities proper transportation facilities were there and even then he traveled a lot throughout the different parts of the world to study disease this shows us his keen interest in the field of medicine then on the basis of his knowledge of the biology and mode of distribution of the cholera vibrio Koch formulated rules for the control of this epidemic means how we can control the disease of cholera and that were approved by the authorities and also he formed the basis of the methods of control which are still used today due to the great work on cholera he got the prize of 1 lakh german marks at that time and also he had an important influence on on the plans of the conservation of water supplies because it is considered that water is one of the main re- uh, reason to spread of cholera in 1885 cock was appointed as the professor of hygiene in the university of berlin and also director of the newly established institute of hygiene in the university there in 1890 he was appointed surgeon general class 1 and also freeman of the city of berlin in 1891 he became means during the whole life span he got the various types of medals and honorarium as we now discuss in 1891 he became an honorary professor of the medical faculty of berlin and also director of the new institute for infectious diseases where he was fortunate to have among his colleagues such men as great scientists like paul ehrlich or von behring and kita sato who themselves made great discoveries so during this period cock returned to his work on tuberculosis he sought to arrest the disease by means of a preparation which he called tuberculin he made up one suspension which is known as tuberculin made from cultures of tubercle bacilli <coughs> he made two type of preparations one which is called old and the new respectively and his first communication on the old tuberculin aroused considerable controversy also when he used the new tuberculin preparation then also it was failed to cause any treatment to the tuberculosis but he obtained a new he obtained a new another substance which is known as tuberculin having a great value of diagnostic diseases next please so tuberculin was actually not useful in the treatment but it is having a great diagnostic value while this work on tuberculin was going on his colleagues at the institute for infectious disease one bearing alik and kita sato they carried out and published their work on the immunology of diphtheria in the year 1896 he went to the south africa to study the origin of another disease rinder pest and although he did not identify the cause of this disease he succeeded in limiting the outbreak of it by injection into healthy farm stock of bile taken from the gall bladders of infected animals then he followed work in india and africa on malaria black water fever sura of cattle and horses and plague and the publication of his observation on this disease in 1898 soon after his return to germany he was sent to italy and the topics where he confirmed the work of sir ronald rose in malaria and did useful work on the etiology of different forms of malaria 
and their control with quinine. It was during these later years of his life that Koch came to the conclusion that the bacilli that caused human and bovine tuberculosis are not identical, means they are different. His statement was actually not considered or created great controversy at that time, but now it is known that Koch's view was the right one. So his work on typhus led to the idea then a new one that this disease is transmitted much more often from man to man and not from the drinking water. In December 1904, Koch was sent to German East Africa to study the fever of cattle and he made important observation not only this disease but also on pathogenic species of Babesia and Trypanosoma and on tick-borne spirochetosis continuing his work on this organism when he returned home. So Koch was the recipient of various prizes and medals like honorary doctorates of the universities of Heidelberg and Bologna, honorary citizenships of the various cities like Berlin, Wallstein and his native Klosthal and honorary memberships of learned societies and academies. And he was also awarded the German Order of the Crown, the Grand Cross of the German, Order of the Red Eagle and orders from Russia and Turkey. And ultimately the greatest prize in 1905 he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine and after that he returned to the uh, Central Africa and work on human trypanosomiasis and there he reported one drug atoxyl is as effective against this disease as quinine is against malaria. Thereafter even Koch continued his experimental work in bacteriology and serology and lastly Dr. Koch died on May 27, 1910 in Baden-Baden. So this was the overall journey of Robert Koch. And at that time, not only these two scientists, some other, another scientists have made great contributions in the development of microbiology. And you can see the timeline of development of microbiology, like the work of Antonio and Lewin Hawk in the observation little animals. Uh, Edward Jenner observed or studied smallpox. Ignaz Philip, who advocated washing hands to stop diseases. Also, as we have discussed earlier, the contributions of Louis Pasteur, also the Joseph Lister and contributions of Robert Koch as we have discussed. So all these scientists made great contributions, the references which we have used. And lastly, I would like to thank the Sandhan team, the KCG team and the Bizek team and the colleagues of my college and also our head and principal Dr. Samir Siparik to give us the opportunity to discuss very much interesting historical topic on the Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur and also we are thankful the students who patiently hear us. Thank you very much. Thank you.